Hello everybody, Can you're gaming here with the guide on the December Awakening stage for Christmas Pudding Cat. Now this first stage is actually incredibly easy. Uh, if you've played the Crazy Cat stage, it's actually very similar to that. So before base hit, a couple of very weak Jackie Pangs and Doja spawn. They're easily stallable with just wall cats. You don't need a racer for the first or the second stage, as mentioned in the title. So just a racer stall these Jackie Pangs, and when you have the money to, deploy your Bahamut cat. And since he has a very long time between attacks, he will just kill a couple pangs, a couple of doges, and he'll kind of just stand there and keep throwing his powerful ranged area attacks every once in a while. And you can easily stack two Bahamas here, getting three is pretty much impossible though, because after about two minutes, the pangs and doges stop spawning, and at that point you're forced to hit the base, and that's where the boss spawns. So Christmas Pudding Cat is a pretty powerful enemy with 1.5 million health, 10.7k uh, DPS with a fast attack rate, 3 knockback counts, and 250 range. So this guy is outranged by most of your mid-range units such as Legscat, Dragon, Paris, Drama, etc, etc. And only one of these enemies spawns in this first stage, but four of them spawn in the next stage, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Pudding Cat is also supported by a Kamel, who is a very high range enemy with very low damage. Rainy D, who is a 300 range enemy, quite similar to Christmas Pudding Cat. Uh, he has about half of Christmas Pudding Cat's damage output, way more knockback counts, and way lower health though. So think of him as like a little weaker uh, mid-ranger that helps Christmas Pudding deal some damage, as well as some otters that tank damage and don't do much else. So the key to this stage is pretty simple, just keep spamming your meat shields. Eraser gets two hit killed by Christmas Pudding, but Wallcat gets instantly killed by Christmas Pudding, though I still do recommend bringing Wallcat because you need all the meat shielding you can get to help protect your Bahamut stack as well as your dragons and legs cats. Uh, if you have the true forms of any of the normal cats, obviously that makes this way easier, especially Eraser, but even without, you can see I'm doing just fine. And the most important unit in this strat is Bahamut. He deals tons of area damage and he is the main way you will kill the Rainy Ds. They have 90,000 health, while Bahamut does 85k damage at level 30, so he almost kills them in one hit, but not quite, but that immense amount of damage still helps a lot, because Rainy D tends to hide behind Christmas Pudding Cat, since Rainy D has slightly higher range, so Bahamut is needed to help kill him and just hit him in general, unless you have other area attackers like Paris and Drama, but I decided to do the first stage of no gotcha because I can. With that out of the way. I will just stop talking, and you can skip to the next stage with the time markers if you so please. Now, the second stage is where things get real. Nothing spawns at the beginning except for a gore and a couple snakes, but after 20 seconds, Christmas Pudding Stupid Cat spawns on his own without base hit. He's actually on the timer. And this guy is pretty hard because you don't have a lot of money at this point. The gory was your only source of money, and he is occasionally supported by gory blacks as well as normal gories who just spawn every half a minute approximately. Uh, they're fast, they're strong. Uh, just like Christmas Pudding Cat actually, but the Gories have a lot more speed and a lot less health, and a lot more knockback counts, so they're basically your money source on this level, and as the stage progresses, more and more Pudding Cats spawn. They don't all spawn right away, but they are delayed by around 40 seconds. As you can see, I brought a lot of items. Rich Cat is mandatory because you don't have a lot of money, as I said. Uh, computer is optional, Speed Up is optional, and Sniper is also pretty useful to help keep them at bay. But the biggest thing is here is that you need an area attacker. I brought Drama. You can bring Ca Paris if you want. Uh, do not bring Cameraman because he has the same range as Pudding Cat, so he won't be able to do anything. Another unit I recommend is Cyberpunk because he's, his slow ability on all of the enemies is really helpful. And another thing is Crazy Likes is pretty good because there are swarms of those guys and trolley bloggers who the waves can easily mow down so that uh, Christmas Pudding isn't shielded from Dragon Cat's attacks as Dragon has a single target. Now, there are a couple units that are very helpful that I didn't bring. Uh, the first one is Uru Run, who is very similar to Bahamut in terms of damage output, except she has more frequent rapid attacks with lower damage, as well as a knockback ability that sometimes occurs, which can help push the Pudding Cats back if they're getting too much ground. Another good unit to bring is, and I'm bringing it, is QB Cat, who appeared in the Madoka Magica collab a few weeks ago, 
Uh, it's essentially the basic cat, but with a, the survivor ability. So that's a helpful meat shield, and I recommend 5 or 6 meat shields, depending on how much you can pack. And of course you can replace Bahamut with either Uruun, or any good generalist Ubers you have, as Bahamut is kind of just the baseline for what you need. One helpful thing is to try to sync up the pudding cats so they attack at the same time. If they're all attacking at the same time, then their rapid attacks aren't as much of a threat, they're not constantly pushing up, because their attacks can one-hit all of your units except Crazed Wallcat. At level 20 he does have enough health to survive more than one hit. And although this level is very overwhelming and brutal at the beginning, after you kill one Christmas Pudding Cat, it's just a it's just a downhill climb from that point, because they drop about 7,000 cash, so you can easily, if your Bahamut dies, you can deploy another Bahamut. You can get all your attackers and meat shields out, and then you have victory assured after that point.